Okay, welcome back everyone to our second lecture on church and ministry administration. So we've been talking about organizational structure, how to design the organization, uh, and so on. So I'll just share with us now a little bit about how um, APC is organized. And um, now I want to say this. So if you on page 13, you see the APC organizational chart. Now, we didn't start like this. In 2001, when we started, we had nobody. <laughs> no one was there. Uh, of course, uh, you know, like, I, I, was, I, I was a pastor, but we didn't have any staff, no church staff. No staff. Then in 2002, um, in 2002, we had one person who was, uh, sorry, in 2001, we had an accountant, but she was not a staff. She would come from the accounting firm. She would do the accounting and go, like two hours a week, very small. Just come, uh, put all the account numbers into the system, and whatever needs to be done, she'll do, go. So she was uh, from the accounting firm. She would come and go. That was in the beginning. Then 2002, uh, our first staff, uh, not even staff, our first person who was working in the church was actually a part-time person. So he was actually working for the company the, that I was running, and he would give some of his time as admin to do admin work for church. But he was not, still at that time, he was not paid by the church. He was actually working for the company. Some of his time he will give for the church work, like we have to go book the hall, when you make payment, those kind of things he will do. So we started very like that. And I think after that, uh, later on, um, I think only in 2005, again, I forget the exact year, but maybe in 2005, our first, sorry, then after that, sorry, 2002, 2003, we had a part time children's church pastor. So he will come. Uh, he was only doing work like on a, like for Sunday. So we'll give a little offering. He joined us. He was part of the church, but doing part, like part-time, not full-time staff. So only around 2005, we started taking full-time staff. So we had first, we had a youth and worship pastor. And then we also took on children's church pastor, full staff. Then Pastor Jacoma joined us. Uh, he joined us those years as administrator. Then um, uh, Arti joined us. Selena joined us. Like slowly, you know, uh, four or five people like that it grew. Right? So um, all, all this happened over time. You know, so what we this chart you're seeing is as today. Yeah, but we didn't start like this. We started with nothing. Uh, slowly, one by one, or added. So the the way we work today is um, uh, so we have trustees. They are the people who are legally responsible for the organization. Their names are mentioned in the trust. The advisory board, as I explained last time, they are people we go to for advice. Uh, they don't. They're not involved, or they don't in directly uh, involved in the day to day things. We go to them when we need some input. Um, so then uh, the pastor, so I, I, as a pastor, I oversee all, all of the uh, ministries. And then we are divided, you know, on, on the left side, you see uh, ministries that are very specific to the locations. So six locations, uh, five in Bangalore and Mangalore, we all function as one church. So we all function as one church. Um, so each location has an uh, associate pastor. Mangalore has its own pastor. And under the pastor, there will be um, volunteers uh, serving. And uh, we also have youth pastor or children's church and so on. Now, some of them are only serving part-time. So example, children's church, Karen and Sharon. They're not full-time staff with the church. 
uh, they're only serving part time. So they they do other work or they were doing other work. I think now Sharon is at home taking care of their son, but uh, they were doing other work. Then they will also devote some time for children's church. Uh, the, all the others, are, or like Binny and Jean, they are not staff on the church. You know, so Binny just serves like a volunteer, and uh, uh, Jean serves part time in counseling and teaching and so on. So, um, so like for for the first thirteen years, I was I was only a volunteer pastor. That means uh, I was because I was running my own business, my company. So I was actually working there. But I would also do the ministry. So I was like a volunteer pastor. But I was overseeing everything uh, happening at APC. Uh, and then the others joined us as full-time staff. And so we built this site first. And then we slowly started other ministries. You know, So the middle section, where uh, we ha started having church staff. And then we would, like, slowly the Bible college started in 2000. Bible College started in 2005, and then various other ministries slowly started, you know, and uh, so uh, Selena joined us to start Catalyst, and she took over Children's Church later. So all these other ministries started over time. And even here, some ministries are led by volunteers. For example, the men's, uh, the Christian professionals, that ministry is led by Ratnakumar Viveka. They are volunteers. So they have their work full-time job, but they lead this ministry. So the way we are organized here in the middle. And then we have a lot of church. On the right side, you see church staff, various departments. Right? So accounting, administration, communications, HR, IT, media, all these. We have people. Um, uh, who are full-time staff, and there may be some volunteers under them who will serve, who will help uh, in these various ministries. Okay, but most of this work is being done by uh, full-time staff. Right? So over time, all this has happened over time. You know, it didn't start. We didn't start like this. So if we if we look in the beginning, uh, our uh, some of our IT work was done by our IT company. So I had people like, there was Spurge and others, Mahesh. You know, they would work for IT company, but I would tell them to give some of their time for the church. And they would build the website and set up things like that for the church. But at some point, the amount of work in the church became so much that we needed to have full-time IT people. So then we started hi hiring IT people separately, and the church would have its own IT department. Same thing with the media. So initially, in the beginning, when we needed some graphic works done, work done, we would give it outside to somebody do it for us. But then uh, the work became so much, we needed to have a full-time person. So we started hiring our own staff, you know, media staff, video, all those things, because it became so much. So over time, we have added people. So we have our own media team, IT team, and all the other administration work. Now, um, it is good to have all these people and have all these departments, all, but now you have to watch over the work. Because if you just leave them, they'll do something, <laughs> and it can cause problems for us. You know, For example, even a simple graphic somebody creates, people can hold me responsible. And this happened. You know, for example, media team. Once uh, the, the the graphic person, he he used an image where the person had a tattoo across on the hand, the image, and they put it on social media. So I don't know what event. I can't remember. Also, they put it. The advertisement of some event is happening. They, but they used this image. Immediately, I got a message. There is a tattoo on this image. Somebody saw it. And they're holding me responsible. I didn't even see it. You know, I'm, I'm expecting media to, team to do their work. I'm not involved. I'm busy with other things. But they did some graphic. They put it out to announce some event. It so happened that there was a tattoo on the image, the person's hand that was there. And I'm getting fault. <laughs> what is this? 
then I understood, okay, yeah. That means some people, they are not comfortable seeing tattoo on, this is coming from a church, say. So I immediately tell them, hey, Photoshop, take it off. Or <laughs> send it, do it again. So simple things. And it has happened more than once, you know, that uh, something they'll find wrong in the graphic. Somebody will see it, send me the message, what, what are you doing? Then I have to talk media team, hey, change, 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 correct it, you know. So like these things. So, uh, and may, you know, in every area, every department, we have to be very watchful because this is church, right? Uh, what may be acceptable outside in corporate, if people do some work and it's wrong, they'll hold the church response, which means it'll come back to me. Their finger will be pointed at me, you know, why it is like this, what is happening? And then I have to answer, you know. So we, uh, for every department, we have to be very careful. And uh, so we, as we talk, as we go into this co course, I'll talk about how we manage that. How do we make sure that everything is, you know, correct? And uh, we are not perfect, so we still there are still mistakes being made. We'll have to give it. So, in fact, two Sundays back, I was sitting in the eight o'clock service, and literally two Sundays ago, they were playing this. You know, just before the sermon, uh, before the service starts, they play a video, and in that video. There was some. There was the image of somebody using rosary. Now I just was sitting there. I was looking. You know, I'm, the service is about to start. Eight o'clock service. They're playing the video. I'm looking at it. Hey, if somebody sees it, I know they will get. <laughs> they, they'll question me because rosary. We don't, and it's a Catholic thing. We don't do it. But our media team who who did that video, they were not paying attention to that. They've in included that in the video. So immediately I got up, I went to one of our meetings, I said, hey, don't play this video for the second service. Don't play it. Because second service, so many people be there, they see it, somebody will send me a message. Why you are using rosary? Are you promoting rosary <laughs> something? I'll get a message. <laughs> so I said, please, this is the mistake. Did you? And the problem was, the person who did the video didn't notice it. They didn't think it is wrong. Like I, I don't know, maybe when they're doing the video, you know, they're putting whatever image and all that, they're doing it together. They're not, they didn't pay attention to it. But now it is going on a public platform. It's coming in the service. And the second service will go on YouTube. Oh, who all will be watching it? So I had to go immediately. Please don't play this video. This is the problem with the video. Please be careful. So, and this happened two weeks back. You know, so which means that even though you know we have um, tried to put a lot of guidelines in place, mistakes still happen, and we have to be careful. You know, so in all the functioning of all these ministries, departments, uh, we have to constantly watch. You know, how people are functioning, doing uh, things. So anyway, this is the organizational chart, and then you know we'll get into the details. So. In each of these departments, you'll have a further structure. Uh, and not all of these roles are filled, so we're still growing. We're still hiring people for different roles. But all these roles, you know, uh, slowly we have to fill. And then we will change the structure if we need to, depending on how the work has to happen. We will change it. We could remove some uh, roles, so we could add some roles. But generally, there is an idea of how we want to build. Yeah. So for different departments, or different ministries, we think about so media and digital engagement. This is on page 14. IT, IT has become bigger now, so the, the team has expanded, and so on. And bottom of page 14, if you look at that, that's, that's important. Um, this is how, so in a church or a ministry, a big part of what happens are volunteers. Big part. So, just approximately, let's say we have right now about uh, 39 or 40, 39 full time staff. We have about um, almost the same consultants. Consultants are part time. Right? So, let's say 30. I don't know the exact number. So, let's say 39 full time staff, 
about 30 consultants part time so let's say that's about 70 people but we have about 300 volunteers so there are more volunteers than church staff church staff and consultants more volunteers and how do we all work together and some volunteers will serve in more than one team yeah, they'll say media team set up ushering they, serve. <laughs> they want to do it it's fine it's up to them uh, some staff also are or pastors will be involved in more than one area so usually every pastor is overseeing at least three areas um, some will be involved in more how do we or how do we you know work so this hub and spoke model uh, kind of explains to us uh, how we can easily form teams how people work across teams and so on so in the in the center there are our pastors and ministry leaders that means they are the ones who are providing main leadership they are responsible for their areas they have the vision for that ministry and they provide leadership example catalyst selena is responsible so she is the one who will provide leadership for catalyst ministry going to schools youth ministry Sam Matthews, he's responsible. So for the youth and what happens in the youth and campus elevates and all those things, he will provide leadership. So the pastors and ministry leaders in the core. Around that are the church staff. The church staff are supporting what the pastors and ministry leaders are doing. Yeah, with all the organization things they provide. And then outside are that. The outside area are all the volunteers. The volunteers are, are providing that additional support to carry out the ministry. So taking these three sets of people, what we do is we form various teams, ministry uh, for different ministry areas, various teams are formed. And then those teams are a combination of pastors, volunteers, and also church staff. They all work together. So teams are working. And many of them are involved in multiple ministry areas. You know, so the church staff will support all the teams. Like example, media team. The media team, which is church staff, they will support all the teams. All the teams that need media work, promotional work, they will do it for them. IT team. IT team supports all the ministry areas. So whatever they need, your website, emails, they will do it for all of them. And so there's a lot of work happening for them because it's just that one team that is supporting all the ministry areas. You know, everybody, every team having their events, conferences, so they have to provide the support that's needed. But this type of organ, this setup, makes it easy. We can start a team, we can close a team. It doesn't matter. You know, work will continue. If we want to form a new team, quickly we can form a new team. With volunteers, staff, um, and pastors, quickly we form a new team. We can do it. Only drawback will be if we don't have somebody to lead the work, then we don't start because nobody's there to lead it. Or we have to find a way around it. For example, APC Studio. The, the APC Studio idea was uh, to create short films was actually two years ago. So 2022, you know, we got the idea, okay, let's try to create short films. But we only produced now, you know, just came out now. So we had the idea, but we couldn't do it because we did I was okay, who will lead it? You know, who will provide leadership? I have the idea. I can say what needs to be done, but somebody has to take it and provide leadership. So we waited. Then okay, we were not getting you know, a full-time person or somebody in this area. So what we did, we formed teams. So we got a group of people, uh, so about three, five, five people together. So the five of you, you try to work on this. Let us give it a try. Let us see. So a team of five people uh, uh, got together and uh, we started. So we started earlier th this year only. and. We were able to work on some short films and see how that goes. So teams are very important. Getting people together for them to do the work is very important. Any questions on this model?
Do you understand this model, hub and spoke model? On bottom of page 14, how this works? Got idea? Any questions? Well, simply, like, I just want to know, like, how many pastors are there under APC? Um, how many pastor? How many pastors are there? So here in Bangalore, I, I think it's uh, correct. I, I'm not sure. I think it's twelve or thirteen people in Bangalore, and then outreach, which are like outreach churches. Uh, there are eleven locations, eleven churches. But in some locations, we are supporting multiple people because there they will have branch churches. Or in some locations, there'll be more than one person working. So for example, Kohima, we have Pastor Hurmila and um, what's her name? There's one more person. Uh, I can see her face, but I can't get her name. <laughs> Anyway, so there are two people in Kohima. Right? Similarly, uh, Paloda Bazar, our main pastor is Pastor Deepak Ranjan. He studied here. Then with him, there is, uh, I think right now there's one or two more people working with him uh, that we are helping. Uh, so like that. Uh, the location is one, but they have branch churches, so they will have more than one person that we are supporting in that place. Uh, so, example, Varanasi, there are um, three of them that we are supporting there, but the location is one, Varanasi, but three different pastors with ministries there. Yeah. So, Bangalore is like 12 or 13, and outside is uh, 11 plus a few. So I think every month outside we're doing about 15 people because we're also supporting some of our Bible college students who have started their own ministries. So it's not an APC church. It's, a, it's, a, it's called, I mean, they have their own name. Um, but we support them because they're doing good work. But it's their own church. Like it's it's called by some other name, I forget, I don't know. So we support them. So totally we'll be doing at least 15 people outside every month. In Bangalore, about 13 pastors here. Any other questions? OK. So um, the, the, the main thing uh, that we can take away today is having a proper organizational structure for your ministry. You organize it, put people in the right place, uh, giving them the right responsibility, and uh, uh, and so on. Right? And um, yeah, so eventually, eventually, you know, you want to have something that's national or global. You know, the organization will grow. So we started in Bangalore in a small way. Now there are people outside Bangalore that we have. So in the future, if we need to, you know, have a structure that supports people all across India, or we need to have a structure that supports people across the world, we can grow into it. You know, we will see uh, how that, what that structure will look like. We can grow that organization into it. And uh, last point there on page 15 is that. Uh, you know, today in this in our world today, we need to have a data-driven, technology-enabled organization. Right? That means the work we do should we should look at data. We should look at the numbers to help make decisions. Right? So data-driven and also technology-enabled. So we are using technology in lots of things so, and how we work together. And we will talk about this later. Right? So we look at data. And we also make use of technology in the organization. Right? So as we uh, work, uh, this is important for us. Question? Pastor, like APC has a different vision, right? So 
there are a lot of like staff comes from different denomination or different teaching like background there like some affiliated colleges or something so how uh, like a church cope up with them like there there should be alignment with the vision and also with the teaching and denomination mm. Mm. so there there will be some like different things so how they both like work together like alignment yeah very very good question so we are very careful to when we are hiring full time staff right this is a very important thing we look at because uh, so at full time staff and ministry leaders at that level this is very important they should be aligned to our vision and our statement of faith if they are not then it will cause lot of problems right and then also at the volunteer level even in volunteers also we have to be careful right now at the when we are hiring full time staff or when we are engaging pastors or ministry leaders Uh, we have a interview process and in the interview process of you know when we talk to them we will see are they aligned to this we tell them this is who we are abc we believe in these things to see aligned with that and what we usually prefer to do we usually prefer to hire people from within the church or from our bible college we prefer that so you'll see a lot of our staff Uh, i would say like 90% are from within apc only few are from outside very few right? uh, so most people they come they be part of apc so they understand okay what is this church about what are we teaching what is our statement of faith they understand this uh, and then if they want to work with the church they will apply right or we will ask them and so on but they've already gone through that process where they have become aligned to our statement of faith and uh, our culture and all that if we are hiring somebody from outside we check during the interview and if we feel that it is not a match in our statement of faith our you know what we preach and teach or even in our culture then we don't hire them because it will be a big problem for us you know so every day uh, i should say almost every day lots of applications keep coming from all over the country but of course uh, phoebe screens this i don't screen it but part of what she will look at is so they have to fill up their you know their spiritual experience all of that so part of what she will screen is are they aligned yeah so she will screen even before we do the interview she'll screen yeah. then through the interview process whoever she's interviewing whichever pastor is uh, interviewing they will see then last they will also come to me so i will also check you know, are they aligned you know to our belief our faith and also to our culture because uh, like, so that's why we, it's very easy for us to hire people from within apc or from within our bible college it's easy to do that because they have been with us we know them uh we can hire but that's very very important okay any other questions all right let me just introduce another topic lesson number 5 and then we will close um for today we'll continue this next week so once we have a you know a good organizational structure which will keep changing over time it's not like fixed and uh, we're not saying that you know the organization will never change it'll keep changing we have to keep adapting the structure uh to the work that needs to be done once you have this it's very important to have policies guidelines and standards so that's just number 5 so we need to have policies 
We need to have guidelines. We need to have standards. And these have to be written down. They have to be documented. So that people can go and read it anytime. So that it can guide people in how to make decisions. What, how will we work? Uh, uh, how does the church work in different areas, right? So all these policies, guidelines, standards have to be documented. For example, and I'll give you a simple example. You know, like some, some time back, I was traveling, I was in North India. I was having a pastor's conference. And one pastor, during the break time, we'll just chit chat. So one pastor came, he said, I, I have a problem. So, okay, what is it? He said, I hired one person from church, to work as administrate to help me with admin work in the church. Oh, very good. But this person comes around, say, 11 o'clock. Some days the person doesn't come. Then 3 o'clock they go home. I am finding it very difficult. What should I do? So I was feeling sad. Like, OK, this pass. OK, he's trying something. I said, uh, before you hired this person, did you tell the person what time to what time they have to work? Did you give a letter, offer a letter? Did you explain? No, no, no. I just said, join, come, start. I said, see, we don't, we don't work like that. Because you have not told the person what time to come, till what time they have to work, how much work they have to do. So you can't blame the person knows, and you're not given anything in writing. Nothing is there in writing. So how now you can't even hold the person accountable. Something is not there. No letter is there. So I said, okay, the correct way to do it is you have to give first you explain what is the role, what work they have to do, how many days of the week they have to work, what time to what time, where they have to work. Put everything in a letter. It should be written. A document, uh, offer, we call it offer letter. Uh, put a letter and give it to them. both people must read it, sign it. Then you start that word as a admin. Right? So simple example. The point is things must be documented, the policies, the guidelines, you know, how each area of the ministry has to work, and standards of what how what should be done. Or what level it should be done. It is all must be documented. And it is, should be in a place where people can go and read it. Okay? So over time, this has not happened in the beginning itself, but over time, we have written these policies, uh, these documents. I'll, I'll, I'll share the link with you. It's all available. We put it online for free so that other churches can also use it. Um, uh, us. And then we keep updating it time to time. Maybe once a year we update. because. These standards and guidelines may change, so we have to update it. Um, so the importance of having these, you know, these policies and guidelines, standards, is so that uh, everybody knows, you know, how we should work. Uh, what is the organization's position on specific issues? It becomes a basis for making decisions. How do you make decisions? So they don't always have to come and ask me. If they follow the guidelines, they can make the decision go on. You know. Uh, then there is uh, consistency. There is uh, understanding. There is fairness in decision making. That means we're not partial to one person and other. No, everybody's treated the same way because we follow the same policy or the same uh, thing. So, for example, how many leaves a staff can take? It applies to everybody, from me to everybody in the organization. It's the same rule. You can have you have so many days of leave in a year. Right? It applies. So it's written down. Right? Everybody must fill in their timesheet. So starting from me to every staff, every consultant, they have to fill in timesheet. Only then they will get paid. Yeah? So that it there's a policy, there's a standard that um that is there, and we can hold people accountable also, right? So, you know, how uh, if you if people have not filled the timesheet, we can ask them, or we can go and look at the timesheet and see where they've spent their time, 
right? So it helps us in, in so many ways. So having these policies, guidelines, standards are very important in making sure everything goes well. Okay? And uh, everything must be written down. It must be available. So in our, if you go to our church website, apcw.org slash guidelines, right, you will find all our documents there. Right? So we've made it available publicly. So when other people from other churches call, ask us, we say, hey, just go there. If you want to take it and use it, use it. You know, so um, uh, we will. Uh, you, you can also go have a look at it, apcwo.org slash guidelines. All our documents are there, and uh, people can make use of it. All right. So uh, we will stop here today. Any questions from online students? Any thoughts? Any questions? All right. So Judge, Judge Chen has a question. Is an age limit that we see as a church involved in certain ministry of the church? For example, uh, I heard you say young people visit various colleges, part of the campus that we have planned. So generally, uh, there is no you know, age limit in various ministries. But we, of course, try to be relevant, right? So like, for example, in Campus Elevates, uh, where we go and speak to colleges, there, of course, uh, older, uh, uh, we, we do, normally it's our youth to go and speak, but there are times when they've also invited other people to come and speak, like maybe in the 30s or 40s, or, uh, depending on the topic that's being covered. So, um, uh, so the answer to your question will be, generally, there is no age limit, except in, in, the, in the ministries. Uh, except that, uh, in terms of ministering, except that we try to keep things relevant, you know. So whoever can speak in a manner that's relevant to the ministry, uh, they go and speak. So there is no, in that case, in that manner, there's no age limit. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay. So. Uh, we'll continue this next week. Uh, if you get a chance, go to you can go to our church website, apcworg slash guidelines, and you know you see all our documents there. You can have a look at it. But I'll expand on this next week uh, to show us the importance of uh, having standards and guidelines. Right? Uh, let me just share one example of a policy. Uh, sometimes these policies uh, evolve over time. That means you learn through various situations. Yeah, because we can't see every situation ahead. We don't know. So sometimes something happens. We go through a situation, then we come up with a policy. So for example, in the past, in the early years, 2000, I'm talking about um, 2001 till 2004, 5, those early years and that happened. There used to be a lot of uh, foreign teams, teams like from mainly from the US, they should come to Bangalore uh, for, min for missions, missions work. Sometimes they'll come stay here one year, two years. They'll come to APC. Uh, they'll, uh, they may attend APC. They'll get involved with us in church. And then different things happen. Uh, um, you know, um, uh, different things happened where uh, we learned. So example. Sometimes when these teams come, they bring the, you know, I, I use the word culture, but it's more like the way they do their ministry back home in the US, they bring it here. And they try to make, so suppose they are in, involved in a certain team, they try to get other people to do it that way. So it becomes sometimes a little problem because the way they would do it, the way we would do it would be different, you know. So that was, uh, uh, you know, so if it is good, if it's okay, of course, we will learn from it. But sometimes if it is not so easy, or if it's not relevant, then it can cause problems. Other thing we noticed was sometimes if they come here and they take leadership, then suddenly after two years they leave, they go back then that, who will lead that ministry? And if they have, and we don't have one of our local people, our church people, 
leading that, then that whole ministry stops. Then other situations we have experienced is the church will say, no, we'll send you money. We want to start this ministry. But it also means they will control that part of the ministry. Sometimes they have come, they also want to control me. Happened. You know. Uh, they're coming from there, they, they come, they say, we want to work with you, want to control you. Sometimes one ministry came, they said, we want to have a men's meeting. All these things have really happened. I'm not making it up. They said, we want to have men's ministry. Can you help us? And this is a big, well-known, famous church in America. World is known worldwide. So I thought, okay, these must be good people. They're coming here. Of course, this is a foreign country. Bangalore is a foreign place. They want to do a men's uh, meeting. I'll help them. Okay. So we rented the hall. We informed all our people, men's meeting. They're coming. They want to talk. Please come. They all came. Then they made them all fill form, took their names, address. Next thing I'm hearing, they're all being invited. They're starting a church, branch of that church in Bangalore. And they're all being in. This actually happened. I'm not making stuff. So I was shocked. I didn't expect this, right? I thought they are coming here to serve us. Uh, okay, we will help them. Uh, but uh, these people are being invited there. And that uh, that thing lasted, I don't know, maybe two months and they closed and they went off. So their intention was they wanted to plant a branch of that church here. It didn't work. They packed and left. But how they went about it was very shocking to me. So what happened was... After going through all these experiences, slowly we formed a policy. That means we said, see, we have gone through all these, we have learned. That. We couldn't foresee these, right? Like it only, only after we go through it, we learn. Oh, see, these people are coming, they're doing this, like that. We, you know, uh, this, will, this is what could be the danger that can come out of this and so on. So we slowly formed a policy. How will we work? with overseas organizations who want to come to India and work. We have to be very careful. So some of the things. One, we will never give them leadership position at APC. If they want to come and serve, they serve under us. Why? Because after one year, two years, they'll go back. Then who will lead that ministry? And we may have invested time, effort into that, and they just pack up happily going, we are going. <laughs> then what will we do? So. We will not give them the leadership. Second, we will not take any money. Because, first of all, we are not authorized to receive money from them overseas. And secondly, if they give us money, they also want control. With money comes control. And here, this we are in leadership. We will be in charge. We will be responsible. We will lead it. If they want to come and do something outside, it's up to them. But within APC, we have to be careful. So we never take money from any of the overseas ministries, no. Then we are also careful about hosting events. Now, after anti-conversion rule came, we have to be careful even in letting them come and preach. Because if they come on visitor's visa, they come and preach here, they can get in trouble, we'll also get into trouble. Because you're not legally allowed to do that. So a lot of things have changed now. But I'm just what I want to point out is that have we go through these experiences, then we learn from them. And based on that, we make the policy. Oh, we have to be careful. So we don't repeat our mistakes. That we don't, uh, you know, uh, we have to be careful in uh, their culture coming. I mean, the way they want to do things clashing with us, we have to be careful. And uh, we don't want to, you know, let them take. Uh, leadership here over, over you know override our leadership here and so many things so we develop a policy on this right so some of these policies will happen through the experiences we go through we learn and then we say okay this is how we will work okay um so chaya you have a you may comment there about a yearly or monthly magazine yeah way back in the beginning we used to have it that was, um, I don't know which years, early years. But then we decided against printing because 
uh, you know, it's uh, just unnecessary expense to print. So we just decided that all our content will be digital. And um, and we haven't like you necessarily put a yearly or monthly magazine, like even in digital form, because that just takes different, uh, a lot of additional work and so on. So we haven't done it. And uh, instead, you know, every week, diff content is going out on our website and so on. So we basically use our church website to um, show what's happening and all the content is being released in video form and so on. So we stopped doing that. We used to do it many, many years ago. Uh, we did it in print and then we stopped it. Yeah, so I'm not sure whether we will bring it back or whether there's value in bringing it back. So I'm not sure about that. But thank you for your suggestion. All right, so let's close. We'll pause here for today. You have a question? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, speak in the mic so they can hear. Yeah. Like uh, if other church from other place, mm. if they invite anyone off from APC in their church, it may be not a part of APC. So they go uh, in the area and uh, places. To preach and minister? Yeah, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. So throughout the year, uh, we do take up a few invitations. I, so for example, this year, the beginning of the year, I went to Shillong um, to preach at, uh, 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 there's a big network of churches. <clears throat> they had about close to 20,000 people from all the churches. So, so I went there. Then uh, Bini and Jean, they went to Kerala. They did, did, a, did a, some church had invited for some marriage conference. They went there. So different ones based on the invitation. So I may take, uh, so see, there are lots of invitations that keep coming, but I can't say yes to all of them. I may take about three or four in a year. Yeah. So, uh, so usually uh, I work with Vision India. I've been working with Vision India from 2005. So with Vision India, I might do at least one conference a year with them. Uh, so this year we had it. Uh, our con the Vision India conference was in Nagpur, so outside Nagpur. So when they did, it's mainly for pastors, and pastors and youth. So I did two sessions, separate sessions, pastors, so with Vision India. Um, the other things we're doing, so this year, uh, next, sorry, end of September, we're going to CMC Velo. So they're having their medical missions conference. They have it once a year. This year they invited us, so I accepted that. Um, but that will be mainly these young doctors, medical missions. So in a year, I'm, we, personally, I would accept three or four. Like I can't say yes to everyone. Um, and then other pastors, based on their invitations, they will go. So we do that. Yeah. In that? Uh, I think main criteria is time. <laughs> if we have time, we'll go. That's the only re requirement. And then usually we take care of our own expenses, and we don't unless they want to pay. Uh, so usually we'll go on our own expense, minister, and come back. If they offer to pay, uh, it's okay, right? But we we go as a way to serve those organizations and ministries. I also did uh, the there's a, a AMI um, uh, missions in India association of. AMI, some missions in India, something. Another missions organization did that. I think with them last year, I went and spoke at their conference and so on. So, and some other church networks like GCI, which is in, based in Mumbai for their pastors, things like that. So we work with different ministries, but based on availability of time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We we'll close. Thank you. We'll continue this. Uh, I will pray close. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for the learning. Uh, may we continue to be equipped to serve your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thank you, everyone. We'll continue next week.